Hello, you're watching Proactive. We're here at Mines and Money London 2021, where we're chatting to mining executives across the, from across the globe who are here to present their cases to investors and also chat amongst each other. Joining me now is Anil Varach. He's Executive Vice President and Director of Step Gold. Uh, Anil, very good to speak with you today. You too. Thanks for having me. So what sort of conversations have you been having with investors here at the conference? Um, well, for us, it's a lot of updates. We've had a quite, quite a significant amount of milestones uh, press release in the last month. Uh, we announced a feasibility study, uh, and then we announced two weeks later a financing package, which is you know, kind of unheard of uh, to announce a, a feasibility study and you know, half your capex lined up within a matter of weeks. Uh, most people don't move as fast as we do, I guess. Um, and so there's, there's a lot of recognition in how we built our first mine and how we're moving to our second mine already. So it's been uh, quite positive, I would say. So you clearly have the interest of investors in the projects. <laughs> yes, yeah, absolutely. You know, Mongolia is still, um, I, I would say, relatively misunderstood or a lot of education required to, to, to show people how you can invest in, Mon in Mongolia, how you can do things properly, uh, build a team that's uh, Mongolia focused. 99% uh, of our workforce are Mongolian, uh, which allowed us to bring production online for the first time ever during April 2020 at the height of uh, the first wave of COVID, I guess, where you couldn't even travel into the country if you tried. So we're, we're, we're a nice poster child of, you know, of a new regime to show people you can invest in Mongolia, get the government support, the local support, the, the provincial support. And this package, this landmark package, finance package we received a couple weeks ago, shows just that, uh, you know, it was sponsored by the Bank of Mongolia through their Gold 2 program. So 60 million US has been provided to us, sponsored by the Gold 2 program, which is the Bank of Mongolia. So that's uh, a fantastic endorsement showing you the capital is available. There's a, a lot of interest from foreign investors and the government is open for business and, and they're showing, I think, uh, through us, um, that certainly they're doing the right things. You have a number of projects on the go in Mongolia, don't you? Do you want to take us through those? So there's Atto Gold, you have the Mungo Gold and Silver Discovery, uh, and there are other projects as well. Absolutely. So the ATO project is our flagship cornerstone asset. Uh, we bought this from Sentara Gold in 2017. Uh, it was a, it was a, a build-ready project, fully uh, permitted uh, and licensed uh, for heap leach, a CIL plant, and flotation uh, circuits. Uh, what we did is take a phase approach, built the heap leach first uh, for about 25 million uh, US, under 14 months construction, brought that uh, profitably online uh, and double the resource in the meantime. So now the 1.2 million ounces we started with when we bought this project from Satera is now over 2 million ounces and now is the basis of this feasibility study that has added 10 and a half years of mine life uh, at 100,000 ounces uh, uh, per annum. So it's a significant increase starting from a 3 to 4 year mine life at 50 to 60,000 ounces adding this 10 and a half year mine life. So that's the ATO project which does include the Mung discovery, which is right next door to ATO4. So uh, less than 500 meters away from surface, you have a new discovery called Mung, which we put a maiden resource on earlier this year, about 425,000 ounces. It's only been drilled down to 400 meters. So a lot of opportunity to still grow this at depth, all four deposits, ATO and Mung. And Mung actually, eight, eight million tons of the nine, of the nine million tons that exist there today have not been included in this feasibility study that we released. So there's a lot of optimization and additions that will occur in the next two years while constructing the second uh, plant and bringing the phase two online, we'll, we'll be able to optimize that life of mine, adding more ounces through Mung, uh, maybe at depth extensions or new, new discoveries as well uh, on trend uh, on this mining license. So there's a lot of um, opportunities to grow this uh, company uh, just from the footprint we have on, on this mining license, uh, ATO. Uh, and and you've, you've modeled your expansions on a gold price of around $1,600 or just above $1,600 an ounce. So with a gold price uh, closer to $1,800, it must really improve the economics of the project. Absolutely. Yeah, because that's, that's, you don't have to pay for that, that increase in price. So we see that right down to the bottom line. So our, our MPV goes up by you know, about $80 million just on spot pricing. Uh, so it's a significant impact uh, to our bottom line. Uh, saying that, we're happy at the, the price today. Uh, if it's 1750 or 1650 when we bring that phase two online, you're still gonna have a margin of about 800 to $1,000 an ounce. So it's a fantastic margin even at current pricing or even at the, the pricing used for the forecast for the feasibility study. So you said the, uh, the margin of 800 to thousand dollars an ounce, what would your all in sustaining costs be per ounce? Sure, so for the phase two, it's $853 an ounce, but there's, uh, there, again, with the optimization, 
both from the ounces you're adding, but also from just the upgrade in power. So that study is based on a diesel uh, gen uh, power generation. Uh, we plan to connect to the grid. Uh, if we show that certainty by connecting to the grid, by the time you bring uh, phase two online, we'll have that have be connected. Uh, it'll, it'll bring uh, our OPEX down by about 10 million US a year, which is $100 an ounce. So our all-in costs go, to, go, to, go down to about $750 all-in uh, with that power solution. Yeah. Uh, so, I mean, you spoke about some of the news flow you've released over the past month or so. Yeah. What news flow can we expect in the next month or so? <laughs> sure. Well, we're hoping for a Christmas present with uh, the announcement of all the reagents, you know, the top of supplies we're currently using in our phase one operation. So our oxide mine, which is producing, has produced uh, very profitably, uh, has had some deferrals over the last couple of quarters with the, the, the delays at the border uh, with China, it's where we get our reagents for the oxide mine. So uh, that'll be a nice Christmas present to announce that we have now uh, brought uh, product in, in the country, which allows us to hit the ground running starting in the new year. So we have a stockpile of about 45,000 ounces on a recovered basis sitting on the leach pads and the ROM pad. So as soon as we have this shipment come in, the market will see certainty of production restart and cash flow really coming in because the all-in cost on the phase one mine will be about $650 an ounce for the next two years. So yeah. uh, that's a big, big, one, big way to, win, to end the year for certainty of having that cash flow and production restart starting March, April of the new year. Um, other than that, I don't expect too many other big announcements. I think in the new year, you're going to see some, some further announcements, but this, this financing package that we just received allows us to continue to expand on phase two. So we're already installing the crushing circuit for phase two today. It's about five million worth of CapEx. Uh, so that will be installed by uh, later Q1. We're already expanding the camp so we're, and, and putting deposits down along the items. So this, this immediate financing package allows us to push for phase two forward over the winter. Um, so it's, uh, it's quite, quite exciting to be able to aggressively move phase two forward and then restarting phase one in terms of production and cash flow, which is pretty significant yeah. uh, considering our market cap. Yeah. So lots for investors to look forward to, and I Absolutely. hope you'll be updating us as the news progresses. But thank you very much for joining us today. Thanks for having me. That's Neil Berich. He's the Executive Vice President and Director of Step Gold.